good morning. What a fabulous trip down the river. The estuary is nice when it's full. It's a, it's a beautiful part of the country. Um, but at low tide, as it is at the moment, going out, um, there's just lots more going on. Uh, we've got uh, resident swans at the top of the estuary, which are looking after five cygnets. They seem to breed every year, which I think is unusual for uh, swans, but uh, I'm no expert. Someone might let me know. Um, red shanks, uh, egrets, herons, all fishing in the shallows. The mullet are ringing. There's the odd little school bass trying to catch uh, small um, prawn fry, that sort of thing. So uh, I've tried to catch little bits on uh, camera, but when I look at it uh, back, quite often it's just specks in the distance. So if I've caught anything, I'll try and splice it in here. If not, then um, there it is. You just have to accept it. Uh, yeah, so um, heading out with no particular agenda other than to enjoy the day. Um, no particular agenda apart from my much better other half at home has asked for six mackerel. The way I've been catching them this year, she may as well have asked for a giant Trevelli or Dorado or something, but uh, I'll do my best. Uh, so single tide today, uh, heading out there. Uh, it's very slack tide. I was hoping to go out last weekend. Uh, it was really good tides last weekend, but uh, I wanted to have a chat about the moon phase again because it, uh, last weekend it's the, uh, it was the fabulously titled Waning Gibbous. Anyway, missed that thanks to the wind. Um, the wind died down, typically as it does this time of year, lovely Tuesday, Wednesdays. Then it was windy on Thursday. Uh, it calmed down last night and the forecast is for it to stay calm today. So uh, single tide right on a quarter moon so the very slackest of tides so not great for lure fishing predators that sort of thing that said i'm quite excited about trying a new lure that i've got um, but uh, i'll bring that out uh, when we get out there so uh, yeah head out enjoy the day see if we can catch this these uh, six mackerel for dinner and take it from there Right, first spot. Wouldn't this be nice? See if there are any mackerel about. What a beautiful day. Reach the bottom. Just mackerel feathers, very simple. On the hunt for dinner. First drop, it's very encouraging. Is a very good start. One of those is a monster. Look at that for a start. I'm bleeding everywhere with it. <laughs> Three, we're halfway there on the first drop. <laughs> they were right on the bottom, so um, I don't know if you saw on the first drop, but I tried it on several ways several spots on the way down just in case there's a few fish there but um, yeah they were right on the bottom so I've just sent it straight down to the bottom see if there's any more there
Right, let me sort these fish out and have a little bit of clean. Well, that was a really good start. Three mackerel. We've definitely got a starter. Just three more and that would be really nice. I've sorted those fish out. Um, two reasons. One, if, you, if you're eating fish, you, you've got to treat them properly. Um, but I also believe in sort of respecting the quarry. Uh, I've got another video where I show um, dispatching, bleeding and filleting mackerel. Uh, I'll put that in the description. Then if you want to watch it, you can. Not everybody likes to see, um, to see that sort of thing. So if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But if you want to see how I do it, then um, I'll, uh, I'll put it in the description and you can, uh, you can have a look at that video. Um, so those fish are, uh, I'm bleeding them at the moment. Uh, and then uh, I'll fillet them off shortly and put them on ice and they'll be as fresh as fresh can be and they'll taste delicious tonight. Hopefully with three more to go with it. You can keep, you can keep mackerel in a bucket of water for a certain amount of time. Um, if you've got a, a bigger boat and if you've got a live well tank that actually circulates the water you can keep them, you can keep them alive for a long time. But uh, mackerel, along with um, tuna and sharks, are what they call ram ventilators. Oh, there we are again. Yeah, they're what they call ram ventilators. So if they're not moving, they're not getting oxygen. If you look at a fish tank, others buckle or pump ventilators you'll see fish that are stationary and they move their gill plates around and ventilate themselves like that. You're slowly deoxygenating de a mackerel if they're, uh, if they're not moving. So um, yeah, so I, I sort them out straight away. I didn't think that felt like a mackerel. Tidy little inshore pollock. It's not very deep here, 30 meters. That'll go back absolutely fine. Back on the hunt for mackerel. Uh, yeah, I hope you got that. So you can keep mackerel in a bucket for a while. Some people like to, uh, you know, just keep them alive in a bucket and then sort them all out um, in one go. I'm quite happy to stop for two minutes and, uh, and sort them out. Nothing wrong with keeping it in a bucket for a while, but don't, not not for too long. So, like I say, you're just gradually deoxygenate, deoxygenating the fish, and that's just uh, not really fair, in my opinion. Two drops. Fish on each drop, two species. Summer fishing for me is brilliant. Mackerel, a few small species, that's great. Some place, some gurnard, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just, just really nice. Ideally not with a long sleeve top on, but they're starting to, the day's starting to warm up. And of course, as well as the fishing, it's all about being out here on a day like this. Absolutely glorious. A little bit of swell hanging over from uh, yesterday's wind and the wind that we had the day before, but nothing at all. Quite happily have a season like this. Those fish are now filleted and on ice. So like I said, they will be delicious. The added bonus by uh, with filleting them early is that you end up with some mackerel belly strips which are the perfect supplement for some feathers. And I've just moved up a couple of hundred yards up the coast. There was another boat where I was and uh, uh, he hadn't caught any mackerel, so I um, thought we'll just move a little bit. There's something showing on the sounder, only about 10 meters down, but I think they're very small fry. 
which we seem to have had a lot of this year. Um, there's, we've had a lot of inshore schools of bass, but they're feeding on very small fish. Uh, so the, the bass have been quite small. The bass have been quite small and um, some of them have been quite thin as well. I've only actually taken one bass home this year, although I've caught quite a few. Um, yeah, they're expending quite a lot of energy for um, not much in the way of nutrients. That's my feeling anyway. Um, yeah, and my feathers have just passed through a shell of something and not hooked anything, so I think they are very just, just very tiny fry. I'll keep my eye out for bird activity there, because I've got that lure on the other rod, which I'm very keen to try. Um, so if I see any bird activity in shore, we'll give up on the mackerel fishing and have a cast around with that one. In the meantime, I've got three more fish to find for dinner. Well, after the perfect start with mackerel and pollock on two drops, I've had about another eight drops with nothing. But, we now find something. Feels like it could be another pollock to me, small pollock. Doesn't really matter, whatever it is, where there's fish feeding, there'll be other fish. Oh, it's not a small pollock. <laughs> Come here, spiny. How beautiful are these? Little tiny red gurnard. Look at their eyes. They're amazing little fish. Bigger, they're also amazing eating. <coughs> but they always return well as well, so that is good. Excellent. Excellent. Three species. What was I saying about summer fishing? Still need those three mackerel though. I would definitely settle for a larger gurnard. They're really tasty fish. Um, they're not the easiest fish to fillet, but they're not also not massively difficult. And yeah. Mackerel on the grill with some gurnard on the side as well. Perfect. Someone wouldn't necessarily agree with me though and she wants three more mackerel. So we'll fish on. Well, there's something on there, but it's not very big. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, whatever it was, it just come to life. Species number four, a beautiful male cuckoo wrasse. Now, I said the gurnard was pretty. It is pretty. Look at the eyes on that also and the colors in it. Amazing. Yep, and down he goes. Now, dare I say, this feels more like the target species. I'm usually wrong though. Got <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> another one. I haven't seen these around inshore for a couple of years. Um, and then you catch two on the bounce. Let's just get that 
coat's coming right in the bony bit. There it is. Lovely condition. Don't know if you can see it there, but they've got lovely sharp teeth as well. There it goes. I have drifted over from a flattish area to something that's a little bit more reefy. Uh, so yeah, more likely to get stuff like that as well. But equally, it's where the bait will be holding up, holding up so um, hopefully there are some mackerel about. It's nice this, uh, this bit of area, it sort of drops off from reef to sand. Um, but the drift, you can just go for as long as you like. Very fuel economical day. Lots of people have been asking me about gear, many uh, rods and reels. Um, I think it's quite a few people getting into fishing, just looking at films and videos like mine, uh, trying to get a bit of advice. Um, mine certainly isn't a how to do it channel. I just show you what I do really. If you can pick up some bits from it, that's absolutely fine. So um, I don't have loads and loads of tackle. Um, I, I only have three rods. If you're going to get one rod, for me, this type of thing is perfect. This is uh, um, Shakespeare Ugly Stick GX2, uh, and this is the um, what weight is it? Uh, 12 to 20, of course it is. Shakespeare Ugly Stick GX2, 12 to 20 pound, um, which means that it's nice and bendy. So. It's great, it'll take the shock out a bit if you're pollock fishing. It's strong enough to pull up a ling. It's great for mackerel fishing, you can place fish with it. It's an all-rounder. Um, and for most of the uh, fishing around the UK, a 12 to 20 pound class um, will do you. It'll, it, it'll cover all sorts of things. These reels are amazing. A pen fathom, two speed lever drag. This is the 15 size. For some people's budget, they would be quite expensive, for others not so, but it's worth the investment. Um, they've changed the colour on these now, so I am tempted to get another one. But I can't justify changing a reel for a change of colour. But I've had these for several years. Uh, they get washed um, just in fresh water after each trip. And when I store them, take the drag fully off, as I do on all of the reels. Um, oil them once a year at the end of the season. And that's it. And I've had the, I don't know how long I've had this, this, this reel, six, seven, eight years, something like that. They are amazing reels. So if you want an all round package uh, and you're only going to have one rod, I would recommend something like this. If you're going to get a second rod, a spinning rod with a fixed spool. There's that lure I'll reveal all later. A spinning rod with a fixed fix spool. This is an uh, Abu Ike, um, and it says seven to twenty-four gram, I think it is, um, and it's just really good, really, really whippy. Um, you can use this for all sorts. I mainly use it for casting. You can use it to catch mackerel on. You can use it to catch pollock on. Um, if you want to go lighter and go for a slow pitch jig. You can use that. The only, the only thing you can't do with these is put a heavy weight on them. My third rod is a 12 to 20. It's very similar, it does the same thing. Having a third rod just allows me to have it set up for different things. And should one break down or you lose a load of line or whatever, then you've got you've got a rod you don't have to lose the day. So that, that's that's my three rods. If you wanted to go further, you could go up in weight if you're thinking of catching taupe or sharking or something like that. These will handle it. A heavier rod might do it a little bit better, particularly if you're pulling big ling out of the deep wreck. Um, if you want a specialist slow pitch jigging rod, you could do that. If you want a fly rod, you could do that. The, the, 
the tackle combinations are literally endless but something like this perfect all-rounder a spinning rod great a second rod like this you're covered for most occasions and you can do all sorts of fishing with that there we are still need the fish to be there Feathers have come good again. I'm not convinced it's mackerel. <laughs> well, it was inevitable at some stage, and that's species number five. Nothing more at that other position, so I've just uh, moved up the coast a little bit. Still on the hunt for mackerel, still got the feathers on, baited with the uh, belly strip, all that's running out. Yep, yeah, one strip left. So you could do some more. This is a distinctive uh, ridge feature. Um, just try it, see if there's any mackerel hanging about on it. I'll show you it before we get up to it. There it is. It's a, quite a distinctive ridge and there's a bit of bait or something there so I might reel in a little bit. Well, whatever it was, it's certainly not hungry mackerel. There's a couple of features here actually quite close together. There's the ridge which I'm on now, and then there's a wreck. And then there's a, there's, there's a drop off, which um, can all be good. bigger than I remembered actually, it's uh, just over 40 metres, so yeah, 10 metres high that ridge. Add something right off the top of it. Foul hooked. That is a scad, which is oh. Scad or horse mackerel and my bait freezer is empty. That is a perfect size, so uh, that one's coming home with me when I recover it from the deck. Some fish are blessed with really nice names, aren't they? The John Dory, Cuckoo Rass, Scad. Not a very nice name, is it? <laughs> Poor old Scad. Well, the ridge produced a scad, the wreck produced nothing. So I've come to this drop off ledge type thing. I can't do anything with the boat, it's just, it's just spinning. I've tried to position it and it's just spinning. Slack winds and tides all over the place. So um, uh, we're right off, you can't see it because it's behind us, right by um, a point. So the tides are doing a bit of all sorts really. Uh, yeah, back in 30 meters of water. So I've dropped the lead to a six ounce. 
upped into an eight for the uh, 50 meter bit just back there. There's an absolute cloud of stuff on the sounder. Uh, and it, it, I tried to get it on the camera, but I don't think I'll, I'll pick it up. They're tiny little sand eels. So I'm just trying a lure. I'm gonna, um, I want a bit of weight on it. So I've got um, one of Arctic Assassins, one of Lazy Lures, sorry, Arctic Assassins Bomb Squad. A um, bit of weight on it to try and get below the sand eels and um, see if there's anything, see if there's anything feeding on them from below. Yeah, it's thick with little fish. It's just showing a depth of um, 0.7 of a metre. Surprising there's no birds on them actually. I was saying I was surprised that gulls weren't working on those fish and I saw some not so far away so I've just moved up to them. See if we can't finish the day off with a bass. <laughs> Looks like we can. The Bomb Squad Arctic Assassin has done good. That's a good size. I'm going to see if I can find a bigger one. The good thing about these heavier lures, like the Bomb Squad ones, is that you can hear that the birds have gone quiet. That means that the uh, bait fish have gone down to depth and hopefully the bass are there with them. So that's the theory anyway. So I'll let that go a little bit deeper and see if we can find one there. No, this time, but you can't win one every go. I think that's seven species as well with that bass. Unlike the mackerel, um, bass are pump ventilators, so they will keep well in a bucket of water for a while. So I'll keep that one alive. I didn't measure that, but um, it's definitely over 42. So it's takeable size, but if I can get a bigger one, I'll let that one back. Something hit it then, but didn't take it. And again, and again, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh creaky <laughs> popped off and sprung back at me <laughs> all my reels suddenly started making a bit of a noise A bit of a smaller fish, but I'm not convinced now. Feels good. Sp 
spikes and spines all over these things. There it is. Another prime bass. That one was going back anyway. <laughs> Just slipped over the back hole by itself. Um, yeah, he was... Um, uh, probably 48 centimetres, something like that. My bait board is 50 and it was just shy of that. Well, that little shoal of bass um, disappeared as soon as it arrived. I've kept that one, it was 48 centimetres, so that's fine, sorting that out. Uh, one popped over the back and then one uh, one uh, just uh, just lost close to the boat. Uh, I've only got about three quarters of an hour to an hour left on this tide before I have to start heading in. So I'm going to head back to... Uh, where I think my best chance of a mackerel might be uh, and I've got some ragworm as well so I'll probably put the mackerel feathers over the side see if we can pick anything up with a rag let's uh, get over there and give it a try right last five minutes so uh, of course I've come back to the exact same spot that I had the three this morning see if we can't have a little last five minute success not that I'm complaining Three nice sized mackerel and the bass will feed as well tonight. Well, there we are. Um, didn't quite make the dinner target of uh, six mackerel, but uh, we'll eat very well off uh, three mackerel and a bass. Uh, so that is really good. Um, a proper summer days fishing really for this area. Uh, didn't go very far out, didn't use very much fuel. I think the furthest I was out was maybe three quarters of a mile and a lot of it a lot closer than that. Um, for seven species as well, nothing huge but a really good days fishing. Uh, so yeah, seven we had the uh, mackerel, pollock, pouting, gurnard, really nice to see cuckoo wrasse around again, uh, scad and bass. Uh, that uh, shoal of bass popped up unexpectedly on a slack tide like this. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that, that, that was really good. Going back to the mackerel, if you want to see how I um, bleed, dispatch, and um, the other way around, dispatch, bleed, uh, and fillet mackerel, I'll put it in the description and I'll put a time where it is. Um, I'll, I'll find that video and, uh, and pop it on. So if you are interested in that, uh, it's there for you to watch if you want. Um, yeah, our, uh, our tide cycles come round sort of every try and keep it in the sun our tide cycles come round uh, every fortnight uh, with the new and the full moon so we're slack tides this weekend if the weather's good next weekend we'll be uh, we'll be on to uh, neat tides so we might get further out for um, the bigger fish uh, the predators that that sort of thing um, or uh, I might be indoors if the wind gets up. No doubt it'll be a lovely Tuesday or Wednesday. Anyway, hopefully the weather will stay calm. Hopefully you'll uh, join me and I'll see you then. Cheers.